Greetings, my fellow nurses. Welcome to the Medically Affiliated Nursing Channel. So today, I am here with my fellow nurse brother, Sean, and my fellow nurse brother, Travis. So today, we're going to be talking about just general shock. Four types of shock, which we're going to get into hypovolemic, cardiogenic, distributive, and non-distributive. So uh, just very basic. What is uh, shock, guys? So shock is a condition in which the... Uh, the body is not able to perfuse the tissues. Mm. The oxygenated blood is not reaching the cells. Cells are going to start to die. When cells die, the tissues aren't going to work. Right. So at that point, that's when the vital organs don't get enough perfusion. You might have to go to dialysis because your kidneys don't have enough perfusion. Your liver uh, will shut down and it'll lead to other complications. So that's one of the most important reasons with hypovolemic shock um, that we have to take care of. What would be besides trauma? getting into hypovolemic shock, what would be another reason to come in and have hypovolemic shock? What would be the cause of it? So another hy cause of hypovolemic shock is going to be like dehydration. Oh, um, that happens all the time for us. But in reality, not drinking enough fluids. Yeah, you're right. You just, your blood pressure drops, your heart rate does go up, just typical uh, signs of shock. And you're just trying to compensate for not having enough volume, right? That's it. From dehydration. Um, another one would be what? Uh, well, cardiogenic shock. Okay. So cardiogenic shock is a problem with the pump. You got a direct pump failure, and, and the heart's just not able to uh, to pump blood forward. Mm -hmm. uh, one example of when that might happen is like an MI if they have a cardiac arrest oh, or something straight. like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Heart uh, attack. You know, the, the heart's not pumping blood uh -huh. forward. And another thing that could lead to that is if you already had a heart attack and you already have CHF, congestive heart failure, um, or left or the right side, but still it's still heart failure and that could be a complication leading to cardiogenic shock. Um, what would be another reason to get uh, cardiogenic post shock? Post-arrest, you know, somebody who's had BTAC, BFib. So um, dysrhythmia, yeah, yeah. had any type of stun to the heart. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So then the heart's just <clears throat> quivering. It's not actually pumping like it's supposed to. Yeah. So. Yeah, you got a problem with your pump. You're right, and at this point with the shock, it's not um, other complications from hypovolemic, so it's not volume or other reasons. It's the heart; it's just not pumping correctly. And right. at this point, um, you just don't have good blood flow uh, to your whole body because the heart's not pumping sufficiently and properly and uh, like it should. So yeah, yeah, and that'll actually lead us to um, obstructive yep. Yep. Uh, shock, which is the third one, mm -hmm. um, which is an indirect pump failure. Cardiogenic is a direct pump failure. You got mm -hmm. a problem with the heart. In, uh, in obstructive shock, you've got an indirect pump failure. Okay. So uh, there's something that's happening outside of the heart that's uh, not allowing the heart to pump. Right, right. And so one thing that would lead to that would be... No. Uh, like a cardiac tamponade. The uh, mm -hmm. fluid builds up around the heart and the heart's trying to work against an external force and eventually gets to the point where it can't even really beat sufficiently right right so therefore you're at a standstill yeah and you're you're in an emergent situation another reason to to lead to that would be also a pulmonary embolism so a clot breaks down all of a sudden uh, stops the obstruction flow to the heart and at that point you end up having um to use blood thinners blood clotters to get that down so your heart can go back to perf to its perfusion state and work properly um that's <clears> what would be. and then also like uh like a tension pneumothorax yep. um you, the the pressures inside the the chest have changed because you've got this large pneumothorax and the, and the heart is uh, going to have a hard time pumping yeah. against that kind of a pressure. And yeah. uh, so the thing to remember with obstructive is the treatment is to uh, to reverse the the cause. Okay. You know. Uh, right. So the last one we're going to talk about is distributive shock. Um, we're just going to break that down really quick. Um, what would be distributive shock? Right, friend? so distributive shock is basically um, decreased vascular volume mm -hmm. or vascular tone. You've got too large, of your blood vessels are, are growing too much because they're too weak and mm -hmm. they just don't have very much tone and it's not enough for you to have a good blood pressure to perfuse your organs. And someone who would come in for that type of shock would be like a blood infection, so septicemia, uh, septic shock, which would be one of the things that would have a patient come in, uh, the infection overtakes uh, the blood, and to that point it just becomes very thick, slow moving, and it just goes to what we call septic shock. The, uh, think of it as you know, you're watering the, <clears throat> your garden with your garden hose, you oh, have yeah. plenty of pressure. Your hose is this big. Yeah. You throw it into a bigger hose with the same amount of water, say a fireman's hose, yeah. you're not going to get any. You're not going to get any at all. Correct. So what do you have to do? You've got to figure out why you're dilated, mm -hmm. you know, what's the cause. Right. So, and you're going to treat it by either trying to clamp it down or fill the void of the space. Correct. So give it enough more water. Yep. Yeah. So for these types of uh, types of shocks that we discussed, I want to make sure you guys 
have if you guys have any other questions comments let me know on the bottom we're gonna go ahead and just break down what we did for you guys so hypovolemic shock cardiogenic shock uh, we have distributor shock mm -hmm. and what's the last one we discussed again obstructive obstructive, obstructive shock. shock so those are the four types guys and if you guys have any other questions like I said drop on the bottom comment subscribe like don't forget my boy nurse Sean and nurse Travis my fellow YouTube nurses have a Merry Christmas happy holidays you're screwing with my mind. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Wait a second. That's awesome, bro. Was All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> love the intro. Yeah, I did. I had, my, I had my thumb like halfway up. Ninja, this ninja went like this. Sure, I'll talk about it. <laughs> my fellow nurses before i end this video i want to say thank you for everybody watching subscribing liking and commenting and i also want to do my last thing is a shout out to my fellow nurse brother nurse bass thank you for following subscribing and uh, just being down my friend everybody have a good one